Welcome back to Next Normal to the Farsight Chat with uh, Chema or Jose Maria Guido with the title Where are the digital opinion leaders? I believe this will be a very interesting Farsight Chat. But before we start with the chat, uh, Jose Maria prepared a very interesting presentation as he usually prepares. So, Jose Maria, please feel free to set up the stage. Thank you, Dario. Uh, and yeah, this is just a couple of slides to to trigger the conversation about digital opinion leaders, because this is not a new topic. And this is uh, actually a topic that has evolved much faster in other industries uh, and also more in the consumer healthcare uh, side. Um, so, well, before that, actually, I wanted to introduce myself as well for those who don't know me. I uh, I, I have some time in the pharma industry already in several areas, uh, in multiple companies. Uh, and actually, I am trying to build, uh, some. Uh, just to put as an example, uh, uh, to build a, a set of followers for me to uh, as an influencer myself. So if you want to follow my work in, uh, as painter, I, know I normally like to paint on the right, on the left side, you can have my account. And also, if you want to scan the QR code on the right side, you will see the videos of Ichema, which is a character that uh, we created uh, recently. Uh, so the uh, just to trigger the conversation and to do a, just a recap on what is why it's important to connect with digital opinion leaders, right? So in the previous uh, session, you were talking about paid media and the importance to understand uh, the doctors as consumers as well, right? Because they also uh, they also have uh, behaviors as people, right? Because they are people. And I took this example for uh, of Next Pharma Summit. Uh, in the uh, in, if Next Pharma Summit engages with one person, then this person is expanding the 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 usage or the reach of Next Pharma. But it's actually in a more um, organic way, right? Because people follow this person. People people follow this opinion leader. And this opinion leader has more chances to deliver a more authentic message uh, that it doesn't really feel as, as, as an advertisement, you know? Uh, but the, 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 the important point that I wanted to make here in this slide is uh, we always need to think about what kind of audience does this digital opinion leader has? Because for example, Next Pharma is not going to go to engage with uh, an influencer that it's uh, constantly talking about fitness. Right, because they because they, this guy, this person is not uh, talking about fitness. Is not it's not talking about customer engagement or customer experience or or commercial, right? And if this and if this fitness guy or 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 lady doesn't have followers interested in in topics related to Next Pharma, then it doesn't really make sense, right? So this is our starting point to really analyze the kind of audience that they have. Um, and the other one is how to select them, because if you there is it's not just so DOLs or digital opinion leaders are a huge uh, universe. Right. And then within those, uh, besides looking at the type of audience they have, we also need to think about what kind of influencer are they? If they are a nano influencer, a micro influencer, a, a macro or a mega influencer. And depending on the brand objectives that we have, it's going to be the type of influencer we're going to select, right? Um, and this is one of the topics we can maybe we can talk about it later on, Dario, uh, on, on the on the questions and be on the discussion. For a mega influencer, for example, uh, an, a typical cost for a for for a, a mega influencer to to post something in their social media, it could reach one million dollars, right? Because they have. A, they, they they have a lot of followers they are almost already celebrities and imagine in your pharma company trying to engage with one of these mega influencers and and, and asking to pay for one million dollars for a post it, it it doesn't match the um fair market value uh processes the sops that you probably have so this is one of the challenges we have and finally uh, the other thing that i wanted to mention is uh, the way that you have to think about um, digital opinion leaders, it's more like a quid pro quo relationship. It's not just, it's not the typical KOL that you normally go and you you tell them, okay, we're, uh, we're going to pay you and so on and so forth. They actually are looking for content that it's relevant for their audience. So they're not going to be open for any type of advertisement because they have to stay true 
to their audience. Uh, otherwise, they're going to lose followers. So you, so you as a company, you have to think about how to achieve a broader reach and a broader and a higher engagement by co-creating that content that is relevant for the audience of the of the influencer, and then let them post it. Give them that freedom to post, which is one of the other challenges we have. How do you how do you give them that freedom without hurting your medical legal review processes? And then how do you measure success? So it's an ongoing process. Uh, it's constantly identifying which digital opinion leaders are emerging that match your brand efforts uh, and, the, and then establishing that quid pro quo relationship, uh, co-create with them, create authentic content that is authentic and measure engagement and conversion. And this is, uh, this is just in a, in a nutshell what a working with digital opinion leaders look like. Um, yeah, and that's it, for, uh, that's it the, to trigger the conversation. Thanks a lot, Jose Maria. As usual, very interesting presentation indeed. So uh, how would you then define and identify a digital opinion leader? You mentioned this already uh, already in the presentation, but uh, per pharma definition, what mm -hmm. would be a, a doll or digital opinion leader? Uh, so I think that you have to, we need to discuss first um, to identify a digital opinion leader, you have to identify who do you want to influence? Mm -hmm. Right. So are you trying to to influence other so identify a digital opinion leader doctor that is going to influence other doctors or a doctor that is going to influence doctors and other stakeholders like patients or nurses, etc. Or a patient influencing doctors and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is uh so I think that the the definition of a digital opinion leader for pharma it's more about identifying the regardless of the definition identifying the, uh, sorry, ident uh, regardless of the professional background, uh, what is the level, what is the the, the people that they are influencing uh, that are matching your, your needs? If you want to talk about disease awareness, for example, and you need a patient uh, advo um, uh, advocacy group or a patient that has a lot of followers, it's also, it's also gonna be in their interest to, uh, to, to help you um, create this awareness about the disease. Uh, but they have to stay true to their audience, um, and this is how we, this is the very first step to identify them. I would mm. say certainly. We all know that we are a very conservative, uh, slow-moving industry. Uh, Thanos again. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, the question would be: Why actually do we need that, that digital opinion leaders? Why why we should care about them? Yeah. Well, I think. Um, Probably the also uh, the relevant question to connect to 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 this why do we need them is also connected to the point of not everybody is influenced the same way, right? So uh, among our universe of of targeted customers, for example, if we're talking about doctors, there may be doctors that that are more easily to be convinced through uh, KOL, uh, a typical KOL going to a congress, hearing a, a lecture. Uh, or there may be other customers that are more likely to be convinced by a peer, for example, or et cetera. So we have different segments of doctors. And the other point is we have different needs across their customer journey. So for example, if, if, if the customer is looking for a specific information about a brand, this customer may go to, to maybe not to social media because they, it's not the preferred action they're going to take. But if, even if they are not thinking about your brand, uh, if you provide them this information through a more organic way to that specific target audience that you know that you're gonna influence them, uh, this is probably the, the, the answer to your question, why do we need them, right? Because they can help us drive a more organic uh, discussion, less advertisements. Um, we are known for throwing ads to doctors in, uh, in, in different websites and uh, and if you deliver a message more authentic through a through a peer to someone that they could consider a peer or someone that they could consider uh, uh, influential, then you're gonna they're gonna help you achieve that change in behavior that you want. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, I think that now we have on one side currently in the industry we have the key opinion leaders, we have the digital opinion leaders. Do you expect in the future, since everything is moving to the digital funnel, that we will speak about the very same term, that actually key opinion leader will be the digital uh, opinion leader? 
Ah, uh, well, depending on how future do you think about this topic, because in the near future, I I don't think so. I think we're still going to have a, the, the definition of KOL versus DOL, because for to become a KOL, you need to speak in, in, in congresses, do publications, right. uh, participate in advisory boards, et cetera, et cetera. It's a different profile. Whereas the digital opinion leader, it could be a clinician. So if, you, if you're on TikTok, for example, you, you will find a lot of doctors talking about a clarification of, of health-related topics, right? So I don't think they're merging in the short term. Maybe for future generations, this will change. Um, but I don't, see, I don't see the two figures merging in the short term. Okay, good one. And does our approach for attracting digital opinion leaders radically differ from traditional key opinion leaders? Yes. Yeah. I. Well, they they have some similarities because, for example, I remember my early days in the pharma industry when we were doing a KOL mapping, and uh, you had different options, right? I, back in the day, I remember we would use to, for example, market research to identify asking doctors who do you think it's a it's a key opinion leader, mm -hmm. and then in this market research we will end up with a lot of names, or we could do for I remember we would we would used to do a analysis of secondary data so by number of publications and then mapping those influence influence networks by uh, by types of publications who was public publishing with who who was speaking at different conferences etc cetera, etc cetera. and um for digital opinion leader if you look at the process it's very similar you have to go and you have to search in social media uh, you have to do obviously your social listening and identify if the if the topic if the if the digital opinion leader is is uh, speaking about uh, topics relevant for you, if those topics match with uh, with your with your audience with your brand objective uh, objectives etc cetera, etc, cetera, and you need to identify who is engaging with that doctor right if there are other doctors other opinion leaders who are engaging. So if you see the process is very similar, although the the change is in the way of collaboration because again you have a lot of you have a lot of restrictions uh, when it comes to doing things in social media right so you're not allowed to promote your brand you're not allowed i mean for example you cannot talk about a specialty care brand in social media and the doctor says like this is an amazing brand obviously they will never accept it right. uh, so, so with them you have to be much more careful on uh, on those objectives if you want to talk about disease awareness or if you want to talk about the specific uh, doctors are known for even posting themselves data, giving their opinion in Twitter, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. in in the end, it's very similar. The only thing is that in the, because it's a public domain, the, the digital opinion leader, you have many more restrictions that you really have to be careful uh, not to be in compliance. Mm -hmm. in, in your opinion, on which platform should we focus on? Uh, is this TikTok? Is this Twitter? Is this Instagram? Because we see, for instance, that especially on TikTok, many, many doctors are having a couple of million followers, like, I don't know, Dr. Stella or Dr. Emeka or, or some others, like, I, I think, and Anthony, Yon, and so on. So which are actually the platforms on which we, which on which should we be keen? Like, uh, in the past, it was certainly Twitter, but uh, mm -hmm. I really see a huge rise of, of TikTok. Yes. I Well... And again, it's it sounds I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's always coming back to who are you trying to influence? If you if you want to influence your patients or consumers, you're you have you probably have to go where the audience is, which is TikTok, and then leverage those key, those DOLs to talk to your consumers about the topics that you want to clarify. But if you want to influence other doctors, you're probably going to have to select social media that it's a specific a specific for doctors, right? So uh, like places like WebMD and Sermo and all these platforms that you don't necessarily, not not the general population has access to. Uh, although it's the same topic, but the, the objective of your communication and the things that you can communicate is going to be much different between TikTok and, and, and the specialized social media for doctors. Mm -hmm. And yes, and obviously, you need to think about the, and this is why I was making this statement of uh, it's a circular journey because social media are emerging all the time. Now we have TikTok. We don't know what is the next best thing, and you need to be you need to be aware of what is coming. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, that that would be my. Still, my many response. are 
in our industry, many are skeptical when we speak about TikTok and uh, some other industry, uh, some other channels and platforms. Uh, so, how would you convince people, and especially you can convince them by giving some concrete uh, measurement success or KPIs? So, how actually to measure the success of such campaigns on, on different platforms? What are the KPIs? Ah, uh, well, it's uh, it's always about a. Um let's take an example of the disease awareness right so if you if you if your objective is to talk about uh, a specific situation of your of the disease that you're treating and you want people to be more aware of it and to actually go and get a diagnosis for example then you're probably going to have to across your funnel that you were explaining your conversion your conversion is going to always going to be a call to action to get a test for example or to or to reach out to to reach out to your website, for example, when they can do a, a self a, a self assessment that can hint them to go into a specific direction, right? So, um, my recommendation is always think about engagement to um, to identify who is the appropriate KOL. How can you drive that engagement with your community? But when you th but always connected to a conversion, and that conversion should be a diagnosis or asking for help or uh, or even sharing the information with a, with another patient that may be at risk or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because let me give you one example. In the past, Twitter used to be the preferred platform for doctors. And we would go to Twitter and we will try to activ activate campaigns. And we would see a lot of reach. We would see like hundreds of millions of impressions, but no retweets and no comments, no likes. And we had no chance to understand if it was really useful, if we were changing behaviors or not. Whereas, for example, in TikTok, you can you can uh, identify if the people are liking or not, if they are commenting, and if you put this call to action that I was mentioning uh, on this on this uh, uh, on the page, then you will be able to understand if the if the patients are really if you're really capturing patients or doctors or anything you want to go into that into the direction that you want. Mm. Uh, as we all know, many digital influencers are having a very short uh, expiry date, right? <laughs> Which means that uh, one day they are extremely popular, another day they are gone. So how to deal with that, with that particular issue? Because uh, here I really have the impression you have to move very quickly and say, okay, it doesn't work, let's try it with another one. So what's your impression with, with that regard about the expiry date of influencers? Uh yeah i think the for the pharma industry it may be different a little bit because the the um, maybe for for health for fitness this 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 is where it's more fast moving mm -hmm. uh, but i think for doctors it may be a little bit different because in the end uh, it's a more stable a uh, conversation across uh, across the years i'm not sure we will have I, I don't think we will have too much variation on that. But if you're asking for advice on how to look at this, um, I would say in, in the previous conversation that you were having, you were talking also about artificial intelligence. And this is probably one of the things that we're going to have to start thinking about. Uh, to have a constant uh, listening about where, where, who are these emerging stars and, uh, and, and start engaging with them. Uh, so that we can so that we can get them into on board um if this starts happening in the pharma industry the ones that get faster to identifying those racing starts and engaging with them are going to want are going to be the ones that get this competitive advantage um before they become too big to to be engaged with mm. um, but the only the, the point that i was making before the the only caveat that i would be careful here is the payment, because currently a typical fair market value, so a typical process for engaging with a KOL, you have fair market value tabulations, right? And then you're allowed, you're only allowed to pay certain amount of hours uh, for for your KOLs, and this doesn't work with the um, with the digital opinion leaders. So if you have an emerging an an emerging star, and suddenly this emerging star wants to charge you much more than your per market value then it doesn't matter if you identify them you're not going to be able to engage with them so there is a big component also on our own regulations and, and internal processes mm. that allow us to have the flexibility to 
to have to have this type of of, of collaboration with not typical key opinion leaders or you can pay them in crypto <laughs> <laughs> exactly you can pay with an nft <laughs> uh, we received an interesting question from the audience which is uh, do you know how many percentage of acps use social media for professional knowledge uh no i don't have that answer uh i don't have it it's a good it's a good question maybe i should yeah. do some research about and it depending what you understand on social media because i mean linkedin and twitter you know i i would certainly make a line between professional networks and private networks because it's certainly not the very same and uh, people are not yes. sharing the same things right even people are not sharing the same things on facebook and instagram we see also that here we have a we have a very bold line right exactly i mean if you maybe if you find out that doctors obviously doctors have a smartphone and uh they could probably have a facebook and they are probably maybe just entering to watch some news or share something but it's not going to be for professional purposes um so i guess it's a good question to answer if they're really using it for professional purposes and which social media are they using for professional purposes yeah exactly fully agree okay jose maria it was a great pleasure as usual thanks a lot for taking part at uh, next normal at uh, this particular masterclass day and uh, obviously we see each other in dubrovnik in may Looking forward to the live event, certainly, and uh, have a nice rest of the day and take very good care. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.